What's up, everybody? My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Corpse Party Sweet Sachiko's Hysteric Birthday Bash. Last episode, we continued with Chapter 3 as Weird Shit. Yep. <laughs> uh, sorry for not uploading this the other day. I ran out of time to record it, so yeah. <laughs> but either way, we can just jump back into it now, so let's go. Uh, kind of don't want to read this line, so I won't. I see, yes. I think that'll work nicely. Okay. In that case... Prepare yourself, Aiko! Huh? Great, not gonna read this scene. <laughs> so this is just stupid fan service, got it. Great, don't care, get... <laughs> and then they zoom in, of course, yes, great, get out. I'm not reading this, this is stupid. Sometimes I despise Japan, you know? <laughs> Whoa, what a workout, huh, Naho? No kidding. Made me realize just how unbalanced the world can be. I've never been subjected to such humiliation before. Naho, I just realized. We may have lost the match, but we won the war, didn't we? Getting a reaction like that out of Aiko is like a long-lost dream come true. It really is. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and on that note, the answer to this quiz question is Aiko. <laughs> That's correct. You get 10 points. <laughs> Yay! Only 10 points, though. Probably because it was such an easy question. <laughs> if we keep getting questions right like this, though, we'll make it. I know we will. I just hope there's a bonus question or two hidden around here somewhere. Getting a point boost from a bonus question would certainly be nice. So let's keep our noses to the ground. Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> let's save then. And get into the actual game. Not being stupid. Okay. Closed door, open door, fluorescent lights. Let's go with the fluorescent lights. Hmm? Isn't that a piece of paper stuck up there in the gap between the fluorescent lights? Wow, it is. But how are we supposed to get it down from there? Hang on, I'll try hitting the bulb with a rock, to see if maybe I can get it to move a little. <laughs> you actually got it! Oh, okay. Now, let's see here. Super bonus question! Who is standing right behind you? Eek? G what's happening? I think it's just a blackout. Are... Are you okay, Sayaka? No, I can't see anything. What's going on? Where is everybody? Calm down, Sayaka. It's dangerous to be stumbling around in the dark. You should stay where you are until it's over. Okay. That said, I somehow doubt the lights are simply going to come back on in a place like this. So, what do we do then? The quiz question. I'm guessing the lights are going to stay off until we answer it. You mean the one that asked who's standing right behind you? Yeah, and I'm assuming, unfortunately, that the you in that scenario is literally just you. The person who read the question. What? M me? If that's the case, then, well, there's nobody standing behind you, Sayaka. Is there? There shouldn't be. The only thing behind me is the entrance to the girl's bathroom. Ah! Ah! Hey, no, no, no! Yeah? No! No! Where are you? Sayaka, you shouldn't wander aimlessly in this darkness. It's dangerous. But there's... there's someone behind me! Damn it, Toguchi! This is all because you screamed. Yeah, but... No! Are you there? Here? He... Oh, what? Who's there? No! Sayaka? Oh, thank goodness! I thought I'd... Lost you, again. Sayaka, I'm never going to let you go again, you hear me? <laughs> okay. Huh? The lights, they're back. That's great. I guess it was just an ordinary blackout after all, then. Yeah, it's great. Naho, oh? What's the matter, Sayaka? If you're feeling better now, I'd like you to get off of me. <laughs> but I, I, I... 
You what? I'm not fucking reading. <laughs> Why is this game so stupid? Like, I get it, it's Corpse Party. But still, like... <laughs> oh, Sayaka! You're getting nosebleed blood all over me! And yourself! Cut it out! Oh, to bathe in Sayaka's nosebleed. <laughs> Motherfucker, why is this game so weird? <laughs> Sainoki, you have no idea how jealous I am of you right now. You know, there was a time when I truly believed Sayaka and Inumaru to be upstanding normal people. <laughs> well, Sayaka, there's a question that Sony's answering. Who said that was behind you, pray tell? Probably Yoshikazu. Uh, oh yeah, um... I was knocking up against the door to the bathroom when the lights went out, but maybe that wasn't me? Was there someone or something outside? Okay. We'll just say a monster. I don't suppose there could have been a monster behind me, could there? A monster? You know, him. I opened my mouth to describe the zombie-like monster we'd encountered earlier, when all of a sudden the door to the room swung open. Startled, I turned to look, and who should I see come in but the very man I was referring to. Oh! Ape? Uh-oh, did we break the rules again somehow? Oh, oh, oh! He seems to be making some kind of... plea? We can't understand a word he's saying, though. Oh, oh, oh! Perhaps he's feeling a bit peckish. Yeah, maybe that's his way of saying, where's my food? <laughs> if so, you don't think he's thinking about eating us, do you? <laughs> I'd say that's quite possible. What? No way! No? <laughs> that's not it at all! Sachiko! What the blockhead is trying to say is, it's really mean of you to not to use his name. Huh? Roar! But when you're a monster, you're a monster. Hey, I'm so sorry. He'll forgive you if you just say his name. His name? I think it was Yoshikazu Yanagi Hori. Oh, <laughs> Bingo! I'm sorry, but there's something I'd like to say, if I may. What is it? You're being very strict about making others call him by his name, so why don't you? <laughs> I just feel like you're being pretty mean to him yourself. Always demeaning him by calling him Blockhead. It's fine when I do it. Is it really alright for you to coerce others into doing something you yourself won't do, though? Nah. <laughs> Wrong? Yoshikazu? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> seems quite elated. Heh, <laughs> Say Sachiko, do I see a little red on your cheeks? Yeah, shut up, shut up, shut up, you jerks! Huh? The blackhead was the answer to the quiz, but since you called him a monster, you only get partial credit. 100 points! Oh my, but this particular question was worth 300 points if answered correctly. What? Seriously? That's not fair at all. Are you just taking out your anger on us because we embarrassed you? Shut up, shut up! I'm not taking out my anger. I'm just doing what I want to do. <laughs> my way or the highway, indeed. We shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth, th mouth though. Compared to the other questions we've answered, 100 points is an awful lot. <sighs> I've just about had enough of this nonsense, Sachiko. Just return Kabiki to us, please. Nah, -uh, Not until you earn enough points. But don't you think making a search for the quiz questions is horribly inefficient? If we keep running around just trying to find the questions, it'll take the whole day, and then that's the end of the festivities. Is that what you want? Now, please don't make Sachiko mad! Sorry, but it needed to be said. I already feel like an idiot for playing along this long. I just want to see Kibiki already. And I'll just read you the next question myself. You will? Where are Kibiki and I right now? If you can make your way here without getting lost, I'll give you 20 points. Ugh. Without so much as a hint, the image of Sachiko vanished from the screen. We have to get there without getting lost? 
How do we do that? The layout of this bomb shelter isn't the same as when I was here before, right? I'm afraid not, no. So I can't show you the way then. All I did was run around wildly into darkness without paying any attention to where I was going. So I have no clue at all where they could be. Kipiki! Wow. <laughs> dog bark. Hmm? The beast stopped and stared at Naho as she was holding her head in her hands. When she noticed him, he began lumbering away, seemingly with purpose. Wow. He turned back to look at us over his shoulder as if he were saying, Follow me, then exited the girl's bathroom. What do you think, Naho? The monster's leaving. Should we follow him? What if we do, and he leads us down the wrong path? Then again, what if we do, and he leads us down the right one? I just don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, Naho, you're so tense. When Mr. Ko is involved, your usual calmness just dissolves away, doesn't it? This isn't good. In her current state, Naho won't be able to make a rational decision. Well, if you don't make up your mind quickly, we'll lose sight of Yoshikazu, and then that'll be that. Okay. I'd say follow him. Because <laughs> it's like, where else would we go? Sink or swim time? What do you say we follow him? Yeah, I agree with that. We don't have any other hints to go on after all, so we might as well. I don't mind either. To be honest, it makes me a little uneasy. But if that's your recommendation, Sayaka, I'll gladly follow you. Okay then. Let's go, Naho. Right. Oh. Found him! This way, everybody! Oh. Huh? Suddenly, something absolutely unbelievable occurred before our eyes. Just as we caught sight of the monster, he walked right through a solid wall, as if it were made of water. What the? What's going on here? He's a ghost. I struck the wall in several places to see, to see if there was some trick to it, but of course there wasn't. It was as solid as it looked, no way through. Yet there was no trace of the monster who'd somehow found his way inside. It seems to be a dead end. That can't be. Yeah, <laughs> aw, looks like you've gotten yourselves lost, haven't you? And since you got the quiz question wrong, I'm going to have to deduct some points. <laughs> but how many to take off? That's the question. Hmm, okay, I've decided. Minus 1,000 points for you. Minus 1,000 points? Uh-oh. <laughs> and I don't want to hear any objections, okay? That's... We... We can't possibly recover from that. Does this mean I won't ever see Kibiki again? Kibiki? Kibiki? Uh-oh. Naho? What's happening to you? Your body is turning black. Is this... The darkening? What's that? A phenomenon which occurs when one is completely overcome by negative emotions. First time I've witnessed it, though. <laughs> How interesting. No. Naho! Pull yourself together! Sayaka, when a person is overcome by the darkening, their chance of returning to their former self is basically zero. What? No! You mean... Naho is... She's going to continue to experience the effects of the darkening, and then, inevitably, she will die. Hmm. Damn it! Damn you, Sachiko! Do you enjoy tormenting Naho? What? You've got it all wrong. I was going to let you meet with Kibiki, you know. What? Nope. Oh. <laughs> we can see Kibiki? She came back. <laughs> Naho! <laughs> my, my. This is quite the rare case indeed. <laughs> Where? Where is Kibiki? Kibiki and I are in the body pool. We're waiting for you, so hurry up and come on over here. Hmm. Kibiki's waiting. We have to go. Now! Ah, wait up, Naho! Naho began bolting, so without pausing to give us much thought, we bolted too in hot pursuit. Strangely, Naho seemed to know exactly where she was going as if she had an innate sense of where this body pool was located. <laughs> wow, you're crazy fast. Really impressive, Naho. Sachiko, where is Kibiki? Mm-hmm. No need for panic. He's over here. Sachiko was floating effortlessly in the air and beckoning us to come closer. 
and Aho followed her lead, though her face reflected an uncharacteristically intense degree of nervousness and uncertainty. <clears throat> Mr. Kibiki is just beyond. Yeah, how so? <clears throat> Christ, I don't know what's up in my throat. The room Sachiko had led us into was thrown haphazardly with bodies. It was, quite clearly, a dump. A place to discard one's victims. And among the corpses sat Kibiki. Oh, <laughs> but he's alive! Kibiki! Naho, Taguchi, and the rest of you too. Did Sachiko do anything to you? Are you alright? Stop! That's as far as you go. I'd begun running to greet Kibiki, but Sachiko inserted herself into my path, blocking me from continuing any farther. She sported an unsavory grin, so I guess we're in Naho's perspective again. Yeah. Move! Not just yet! <laughs> Naho, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. There's a barrier around Mr. Kibiki. It would be best not to get too close. Don't be absurd. Whatever kind of barrier this is, I should have no problem. Stop, Naho. I had been reaching for some holy water, but Kibiki's commanding tone caused me to stop in place before I had a firm grip on it. Kibiki, why? Despite all your power, Naho, you don't stand a chance against Sachiko. That can't be. I don't want to see you get hurt. I'm okay, really. He's right, Naho. You shouldn't go carelessly throwing yourself against Sachiko's barrier. You don't know what'll happen. Sayaka? They're not wrong. My spiritual energy is a far cry from Sachiko's. Even if I were to borrow Sayaka's strength, we'd still be no match. I hung my head in frustration, and Sachiko immediately sprang to life with a deliberately mocking tone. She was loving this. <laughs> <laughs> no need to look so glum, Naho. If you manage to reach 427 points in my quiz, Kibiki will be free to go. How many points do we have? Wait, how many points do we have, Iko? That's a good question. I wasn't asked to keep a total count, so I'm not certain I can give you an accurate answer at the moment. But I do rather strongly suspect our total has not reached 427. That's okay, there's still one last quiz question left. And if you get it right, you're all set. One last quiz question. That means there's a chance. We could still win this. Problem is, what kind of question is it going to be? It's going to be a little different from the other questions so far. If everyone here gives the same answer, it'll be correct and you'll get 200 points. But if even one person gives a different answer, it'll be wrong and you'll lose 500 points. <laughs> what do you think? Doesn't it sound fun? Well, we, we are like in the negatives right now, probably. So we lose either way. <laughs> so this works like the money game in murder in trivia murder party, huh? Okay. By everyone here, are you including me as well? Of course. And we can't discuss the question with one another. That would defeat the point of it, wouldn't it? I suppose it would. All right, let's hear the question then. Okay, here it is. If only one person present here now were permitted to remain alive. Who'd be the most appropriate person to bear that honor? Hmm. You have three minutes, after which point I want to hear all of your answers. Think it over and good luck. What the hell kind of question is that? Each and every one of us was looking around the room, all no doubt thinking the same thing. How do we all ensure we give the same answer? If only one person among us could remain alive, for me that would have to be Kibiki. But then Inumaru would choose Sayaka. Sayaka would choose Naho. Aiko would probably choose herself. <laughs> Kibiki? I don't know. <laughs> Tagachi, I don't know. The answer seemed clear in my own mind, but it was very unlikely that everyone else present would feel the same. So, only one of us, huh? Sayaka, you're a very kind person. I have no doubt your answer will be me. Thank you for that. What a mean-spirited question. There's no need to ask Inumaru for his answer. There's no one in his world but Sayaka. This really is quite the quandary. I wonder who Kibiki will pick. Part of me wonders if it might be me. Hmm, this is tough. I feel like Taguchi will probably also pick Kibiki for his answer. 
I can tell by the energy in the air that you're all trying to feel out one another's innermost thoughts. And frankly, I love this tension. I can't imagine Aiko answering anyone but herself. Next to Itumaru, it's no exaggeration to say she's the easiest person to figure out. Thinking it over, the only two people I don't think anyone will name here are Inumaru and Takuchi. Should be safe to cross them off the list. Which means we need to somehow find some way of getting everyone to agree on Kibiki, Sayaka, Aiko, or myself. And therein lies the rub. I must say, the more I think about it, the more interesting this question becomes. The use of the word appropriate is of particular note. Do you mean the vessel most worthy of persisting? Is it the person with the most future prospects? Or perhaps the person most respected in this realm? I feel like that's the aim of this question, to get us to reconcile which of these definitions it is, and all independently come up with the same answer. I thought I told you no discussions! Uh, my, I'm sorry. I intended that not to be a topic of discussion, but merely a personal soliloquy. <laughs> I don't know about anyone else, but I can't give an answer to this. What? Sayaka's comment caught me off guard. I raised my head up and looked her right in the eyes. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I genuinely expected her to say Naho, obviously. Who else could it be? Without even the slightest hesitation. I mean, if I were to say this person, then I'd be condemning everyone else here to die. And that would make the one survivor hopelessly sad, wouldn't it? And if I'm basically saying my one choice of person should have to suffer like that all alone... It'd make me want to pick somebody different, but then... Sayaka? Her, are you just talking to yourself now, too? Yeah. <laughs> May I ask one question? What is it? Are you, by any chance, going to be giving an answer as well? Sachiko? Hehehe, <laughs> you're a clever one. I did say, if everyone here gives the same answer, after all. So I'm going to be participating in this question, too. Hmm. Seeing how pleased Sachiko was with herself, and with Inumaru for figuring her out, the answer suddenly became painfully obvious. I have my answer. I as well. Kibiki and I locked eyes with one another for a moment and silently nodded. This was followed by everyone else nodding as well, except Aiko. Aiko, I just have one thing to say. Read the room before you answer. <laughs> That's all well and good to request of me, Naho. But you know how terrible I am at picking up on social cues. Thing is, though, Sachiko's already dead, so why would she pick herself? If you do it anyway, I'll tell you where you can find all the victims' memoirs scattered around the school. Oh, will you now? In that case, I'll have to give it a serious attempt indeed. <laughs> Your three minutes are almost up. Have you decided on an answer? We have. On the count of three, then, everyone, say your answer out loud, and I'll join you, of course. Just in case there's a choice that's timed, because I feel like there could be. One, two... I'll just pick Sachiko. Sachiko. Naho. I was a little hesitant, but gotta be Naho. Sayaka, it can only be Sayaka. Um, uh, me? For the sake of giving an original answer. <laughs> me, of course. What? <laughs> You're all over the place! That wasn't even close to a right answer. Wait, give us one more chance, please. No way, that's minus 500 points for you! <laughs> no, please! I felt as though the whole world went black before my eyes. With a loss of 500 points, there was no way we could possibly even hope to save Kibiki now. You mustn't let it get to you, Naho. I'm sorry, it seems I truly am bad at reading the room. Sorry, Naho. I was no help at all. I'm sorry too, but I couldn't give any answer that I tr didn't truly believe, Sayanoki. Yeah, I feel like I was one piece shy of the puzzle myself. Shut the hell up and just go fap yourself to death or something, Taguchi. <laughs> hey, why am I the only one getting chewed out? So now it's time to calculate the total points. Aika, what was the final score? I haven't been keeping track. As I said before, I was never asked to keep a total count. <laughs> this answer seemed to cause Sachiko a significant amount of agitation. What? I wasn't keeping track either! So what now? What do you mean, what now? Can she just calculate our total score on the fly? I hate math. <laughs> <sighs> I suppose I can just try to calculate our score from memory then, if that'll do. Okay, yeah! 
Sachiko and Aiko excuse themselves to talk in private, and definitely seem to be discussing the ma matter quite earnestly. We got that one wrong, so we lost points. And the bathroom events were... Yes, I think that's right. <clears throat> Christ. There appears to be something wrong with my throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure hope we're able to set Mr. Kibiki free. Not a chance. <laughs> no kidding. We certainly worked hard enough for it. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. We've more or less figured out the point total now. And how did we do? Hmm. Well... Yeah. You did kinda okay, I guess. What? Kind of a half-hearted score. In other words, close, but no cigar. You didn't make it to 427 points. No, so that means... What do you mean, close, but no cigar? I'm at least, like, negative 500. Hehe, <laughs> <laughs> as promised, you lost. So I get to do whatever I want with Kibiki now. No, wait, what are you planning to do to him? Just imagining what kind of horrible things Sachiko might have had in store made me feel as though my heart were going to burst out of my chest. It's alright, Naho. Be strong. Whatever is done to me, I'll endure. Kibiki! Okay, Kibiki. Will you give me a piggyback ride? Huh? A piggyback ride? <laughs> yeah! <coughs> Christ, I don't know what the fuck is up with my fucking throat. Ow. Okay, if that's what you want, sure. Hop on. Yay! <laughs> Sachiko, literally jumping up and down with joy like an ordinary seven-year-old kid, bolted over to the obviously perplexed Kibiki and hopped up on his back. What in the... What is going on here? <laughs> you okay back there? You're not scared, are you? <laughs> no way! When I was little, my papa gave me piggyback rides all the time! Did he now? Yeah, but since he can't anymore, I knew from the moment I first saw you, Kibiki, that that's what I wanted mostest in the whole wide world from you, mostest. <laughs> is that a look of sympathy on your face? This is Sachiko Shinozaki talking, remember? Yes, you're right, I know. Hey, Kibiki, can I call you Papa while you're doing this? Please? That is completely out of the question. Aiko, shut her up for me. I'm terribly sorry, but I don't have any chloroform with me at the moment. What? <laughs> don't you what that? Sachiko, you get away from Kibiki this instant. No way, he's my papa right now. Isn't that right, papa? Sure. Don't agree with her. Just tell her that you don't want this. N now, now, Naho. Isn't this a lot better than other ways this could have ended? Don't tell me you're taking her side too, Sayaka. Of course not. I just think that, given what all she could have done to him, having him take the role of her papa is just about a best-case scenario. That's true, but... but... but I've never even ridden piggyback with him before. Well, yeah, I would imagine not. <laughs> what, is that all this is about? You want to experience riding piggyback? If you want, I'd be happy to. You shut the hell up, Toguchi. Yes, some. <laughs> Haba, the others are being really noisy. Can we go somewhere private, just the two of us? What did you- I will never let you have my kabiki. Naho, get it together! You're being way too TMI, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna regret it later. Oh, the face of a woman mad with jealousy is so scary. What did you just say, you little phony? <laughs> my, my, that look does not become you at all. Never seen Sayanoki lose her composure like this before. Now stop, please! I don't care what anyone says. I will never give Kibiki up. Not to anyone. <laughs> Wrong end, naturally. Who's your daddy end? Great. <laughs> uh, new entry unlocked in the notes and journals menu. Strange but true stories of the occult. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, let's take a look at the ending list. See how many I've gotten now. Because I'm pretty sure I've gotten like three. Yeah. So we're missing one wrong end and the true end. Naturally. Okay. So bonus should have that thing. I guess I'll read it. Um, notes and journals. 
Oh. Oh yeah, this was the section that I said I wasn't gonna read. <laughs> Maybe I'll read it, like, after beating the game. Well, depending on how long they are, I guess I could just do them now, because I think I got the other ones somewhere. Haven't we post one... Heavenly Post's third student reported missing. One by one, the young students of Heavenly Host's uh, elementary school seem to be disappearing, as now a third student has joined the ranks of the missing. Classmates testify that fifth grader blank, probably Yuki, was on her way home from school, but got separated from her friends in the hall and hasn't been seen since. Police are investigating the possibility of a serial kidnapping and have assigned countless investigators to the case in hopes of a speedy resolution. However, 10 days have already passed since the first disappearance, giving parents and classmates ample cause for concern. Okay, so they're not that long. Heavenly Post 2. Heavenly Post breaking news, serial kidnapping ends in murder. Over the past month, Numerous children have gone missing within the town, and authorities quickly turned to kidnapping as the most likely explanation. Now investigators have located the whereabouts of these children, and their findings are far worse than anyone could have anticipated. The bodies of the absconded youths were discovered within the, within the Heavenly Host Elementary School building on September 18th, 1973 at around 7pm. Authorities further revealed that a male instructor from the school was found with them, alive but near catatonic holding a pair of bloodied scissors. Each of the corpses appeared to have had its tongue severed and removed. Uh, unique mutilations far too grotesque and disgusting to describe. These aren't just the newspapers from the first game, right? Heavenly Post 3. <coughs> okay. Heavenly Post 4 Children Abducted Follow-Up Report. The brutal, shocking deaths of the recent kidnapped grade scores have now been traced back to the hands of the instructor found in the room with them. The scissors he held are confirmed to have been used to cut out the victim's tongues, ultimately leading to death through excessive bleeding or choking. One of the victims even had the majority of her head slowly and methodically removed. This cranial mass was found on the floor next to her body. The Heavenly Host Elementary students pictured here are the four who were found in that basement room. But Sachiko shouldn't have been there, right? Of these children, one was blank when investigators arrived at the scene of the crime. <laughs> Motherfucker, that scared the shit out of me! Oh my fucking god, that scared the hell out of me! Because <laughs> it started in my left earphone, I thought it was, like, real. <laughs> Motherfucker, don't do that shit to me. One was blank when investigators arrived at the scene of the crime. She was blank, blood, blank. Now my neck hurts. <laughs> Fuck off. Oh, that hurt. Man, that's the most physical pain the game's ever put me in. Ow. A strange but true. Please don't do that shit again. Ugh. Strange but true. Stories of the occult. Chasing down the hidden past of the cursed school building, it really exists by Koki Biki. Over the course of several days, a series of incidents occurred within this town in which young children disappeared one after another. Their whereabouts were ultimately discovered through a thorough police investigation, but said findings were very much a worst case scenario. Three of the missing children were found dead in a concealed room beneath Heavenly Host Elementary, officially unused throughout the school's history. The fourth missing child was thankfully still alive, quaking in fear on the ground, presumably only moments away from demise when police arrived. And that was Sachiko. Capping off this nightmarish scene was an adult male member of the school's teaching staff who seemed to be in a state of confusion. In his hands were a pair of bloodied scissors. 1973, 918. The surviving elementary school student, after psychological counseling, gave official testimony fingering the scissor man as abductor and murderer. The staff member in question was officially charged with multiple counts of abduction and murder of minors, as well as desecration of the dead. He was quickly taken to trial where an insanity plea spared him from prison or death, 
but resulted in his compulsory admittance to a mental hospital. Interestingly, the perpetrator of these crimes was none other than the school principal's own son, who was widely renowned for his jovial personality. However, due to a mental ailment of unknown origin, he'd begun losing his ability to speak, little by little, during his years teaching a heavenly host. <laughs> Once his speech was all but gone, he began searching for alternate places of employment, which occupied him for several months prior to the crime. The results of this endeavor were not favorable, however, and most of his days were spent staggering, staggering idly through the streets. His reputation quickly degraded. Several months after his admittance to the mental hospital, he managed to slip past the many nurses on duty and escape the premises. Immediately upon doing so, he made his way into the concealed basement room at Heavenly Host Elementary where he took his own life by hanging. The three children he had killed were all Heavenly Host Elementary students, but the one girl who was rescued from the gaping maw of eternal slumber was not. Following her close call, she and her family moved to another prefecture, far from the memories that no doubt would have otherwise haunted them forever. Sadly, this was only the beginning of the misfortune that would hereafter plague the school, which had already earned itself a many an unsettling rumor. Over the next few years, Heavenly Host would become a stage for countless- <laughs> Stop! For countless in incidences of rape, molestation, and suicide. Really? With student registration and attendance dwindling at an alarming rate in response to these crimes, the school was eventually shut down. 1975-11-18. The 60-year-old principal at the time, uh, <clears throat> had become infamous as an eccentric who adorned his walls, doors, and furniture with incomprehensible graffiti. Oh, there's a face in the background, I'm not a fan of that. Even later forensic analysis of the writings throughout his office can make little sense of his haphazardly scribbled enumerations. In the day after the school's closure date was finalized, this aged eccentric threw himself from its roof. He broke his neck on impact, dying instantly. As you can clearly discern, the sordid history of this school is indeed awful, but there may be more to it than merely a series of unfortunate incidents. A power greater than any of us can comprehend may be acting as a puppeteer from the shadows, maintaining an actual tangible curse upon this property. <sighs> and the key to it all lies within, with the sole survivor, the girl who bore witness to the brutal murders and mutilations of three children no older than she. The girl in the red dress, the one who got away. My investigation into the supernatural side of this horrific massacre is only just beginning. Rest assured, I intend to make this a regular feature. I've begun gathering data for a follow-up report, so stay tuned. The next issue promises to uncover more details in this morbidly fascinating story. Strange but true, stories of the occult, chasing down the hidden past of the cursed school building follow-up by Kokibiki. Okay, there's more. Let's talk a bit more about Yoshikazu Yanagihori, beloved son of Heavenly Host Elementary's principal, Takamine Yanagihori. The man was a born instructor, pure and simple. He took up the mantle as soon as he could, and performed his duties with peerless panache. But, but, when the Ill, but then the illness struck, and little by little, his winning personality gave way to pure instinct. Is this face becoming more queer over time? It's starting to freak me out. He was slowly losing all sense of identity. Although the cause of this illness- <laughs> Fuck off. Ah! <laughs> Although the cause of this illness- Christ, and now I'm getting tingles. And they're freaking me out, and they're on my back shoulder blades. <laughs> Although the cause of this illness was unknown, its effects were anything but. Simply put, the good teacher had begun reverting to a childlike state. He began carrying an antique doll with him at all times, a memento from a long-forgotten festival, perhaps, given to him by his late mother. His behavior during class degraded quickly. More often than not, his lectures would cease before the period's end and he began wailing mournfully. Finally, several months prior to the kidnapping and murder incident, Yoshikazu reached the point where he could no longer communicate his thoughts. Although he could still understand others, he became virtually incapable of forming words without intense focus. Given all the evidence mounted against him, Yoshikazu Yanagihori was arrested on multiple counts of kidnapping, murder, and desecration of the dead. But due to his mental condition, he was never able to confess his involvement in these crimes, nor even properly discuss them with authorities. Everything hinged on the testimony of the sole survivor, one Sachiko Shinozaki, age 7. 
In search of the truth behind this, the less scientific afflictions this incident spurned, I of course chose to follow the trail of this mysterious little girl. Those who have seen the infamous newspaper photos accompanying the story may remember Sachiko best as the girl with the strikingly unusual red dress. It's hard not to feel sympathy for someone so young forced to watch other children her age being tortured and killed one by one. Eh <laughs> And certainly, if I were to find Miss Shinazaki and secure an interview, there'd be some real moral concerns about digging up some painful memories. But then again, she's been a full-grown and hopefully well-adjusted adult for over 10 years at this point. By now, she should be able to look back upon these horrific events... Now my foot is tingling. These horrific events with some objectivity and give a more thorough account of what happened that day. God, it's still going. Strange but True Stories of the Occult Chasing Down the Hidden Past of the Cursed School Building Part 3 by Kokibiki. Things have taken a truly frightful turn, dear readers. Stop that shit! Christ! <laughs> Reading this shit is more scary than any of the Corpse Party games before this. What the fuck? Like, seriously. It's worse than even, like, how creepy the manga art guy. Uh, seriously. I stand now at the brink of a new age for the occult world. Nothing will ever be the same again. I wonder if it will even be possible to convey in words the significance of where I'm standing at this very moment. Prepare yourselves for a report unlike any other, for, am I, for I am presently within the accursed school building, inside Heavenly Host Elementary. And it's all thanks to my highly skilled protege, Naho Sayanoki. Many of you may know the name. She has the ability to commune with spirits, and it's through these connections that a way has been devised, a means of accessing this sacred ground. Together with my faithful cameraman, Taguchi, I have made use of this method to see these cursed halls with my own eyes. I have set foot into a school building that should no longer exist, a forbidden land of the dead. In addition to this article, Taguchi and I will also be capturing ample video footage. We have no clear plan of attack, so we'll simply explore and record. What will become of us in these dilapidated halls? What secrets will we uncover? Will we be able to learn the truth of what happened here? It may seem odd in such macabre surroundings, but I can't help feeling excited about what awaits us. Surely, dear readers, you can relate. I sincerely hope you will be anticipating my next installment with bated breath. For now, however, I must put down my pen. There is work to be done. I must gather evidence of this remarkable excursion, for soon I shall be regarded as a living witness to the dead. Oh my god, there is more. There's still more! <laughs> Strange but True Stories of the Occult Chasing Down the Hidden Past of the Cursed School Building Part 4 by Kokibiki I shouldn't be alone. I shouldn't be alone. We are not the first to come here, it seems. There have been many before us. And every one of them has either died or been swallowed up by the school itself. I'm not simply using the word swallowed for dramatic effect, either. It is regrettably an apt description. There's a massive curse encompassing this entire building. It's like an entity unto itself and it slowly devours the souls of men. It chips away at a person's core, sanity, reason, even identity. Fuck off, the face disappeared! <laughs> <laughs> chips away at a person's core, sanity, reason, even identity, eventually destroying him. Nothing that made him who he is is left behind. Nope, nope, it's back. <laughs> Once it's gripped your heart, you'll quickly succumb to despair and loneliness. The essence of what makes you human is literally eaten away as if by worms. When this happens, the body begins to necrotize and the soul becomes as black as spent ash. We've come to regard this process as darkening. And whosoever succumbs to the darkening becomes an inseparable part of the school itself. In rare instances, one may be able to avoid the full act of darkening, instead fated to be seared unbearably by intense violent thoughts and emotions. But most of the time, his soul will be rooted here, and he will be cursed to wander these halls for eternity with no hope of passing or exorcism. Thus my use of the word swallowed. This school swallows us whole, growing fatter with tortured souls every day. It makes me sh- Thank you. It makes me shudder just thinking about it. The means by which I've come here, the Sachiko charm. If its particulars ever got out into the mainstream, the school would never go hungry again. To any who may be reading this fourth installment and soon the fifth, it's clear that you're a victim trapped within this hellish place just as I am. 
The least I can do is give you some advice to help keep you alive as long as possible. If you still have even the dimmest shred of hope, hang on to it. Keep it firmly in your heart. Never give up on it, I can't stress that enough. I hope you'll be looking forward to part 5. My assistant Tagashi has disappeared somewhere. Now that I'm by myself, I can no longer go home. So I'm just going to keep writing. It's my one true calling after all. No matter what happens, as long as there's life left in me, as so long as my hands can still move, I will never stop writing. Fuck off! That was so messy! <laughs> All the sounds and the fucking face in the background, was it there immediately? Okay, I'm just actually gonna click on one and then right click to see if you can back out of it immediately. Just to see. You can. So is the face there from the get-go? I just need to see this. When did the face appear? Okay. It wasn't there from the get-go. I sped through absolutely everything and it just didn't appear again. Okay. <laughs> hmm. I wonder why this doesn't appear. It's interesting. So you can review events from the past. Oh, holy shit. It shows you the extra chapters, too. Oh, but it doesn't have the 3DS exclusive ones. That's interesting. Okay, and Book of Shadows. Yeah, naturally. So what's this, then? Hmm. Does it... Ah. Interesting. So this shows the entire tree, so we see how far away Ayumi is from Sachiko. So start... Some of this might be important to know for Blood Drive, so I'm just gonna try to see if I can remember any of these names. So there's Zion, Saria... And then they gave birth to Rocky, Makina, and Chizuru. So Rocky married Kaun, who died of illness. Uh, and they gave birth to Yoshie, who married Seiji, and they gave birth to Sachiko. Okay. Uh, Makina married Takashi, who died of illness. Chizuru married... Tadanari, who died of illness, and they had, it seems like, four daughters. Yuri, Yoko, Jin, and Kanai. Yuri married Tadashi, and Tadashi died of illness. Yoko married Yuki, who died in an accident. So yeah, this just shows the whole phenomenon of... Uh... Shinazaki husbands dying. Jin seems to have never gotten married. So Kanai is Ayumi and Hinoe's uh, grandmother. And, okay, so Kanai married Hirohito, who died of illness, and they gave birth to Ayato, who married Asuka, and they gave birth to Hinoe and Ayumi. Okay, so judging from how this works, that means Kanai is... Ayumi and Hinoe's grandmother, which means Chizuru is their great-grandmother. So... That would mean... Uh, Rocky is their great-great-aunt. So would that mean Yoshie... So, is Sachiko, like... Is that considered a cousin? A distant aunt? Ah, uh, whatever. Timeline of events... Oh, okay, this is... That's just the... Okay. <laughs> I realize I'm wasting time when I could just be trying to beat Chapter 3. <laughs> um, problem is I don't know which choice I have to actually do, so I'm pro I am probably have to speed through a lot of this chapter. Uh, but I guess I'll just save that for next episode. We still got some interesting stuff. Like, even though Chapter 3 didn't reveal much, because this game just seems to be, like, Funny side stories that introduce, uh, <laughs> bonus content that's actual important stuff. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> I guess with that being said, though, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Next episode, I'll try to finish Chapter 3 and get the wrong endings in Chapter 1 and 3 and read any more bonus content it gives me. So, yeah. <laughs> Either way, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, then be sure to press the like button, and if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!